Welcome, George. So following the introductory remarks of uh, Minister Kajidakis uh, on the energy sector, we are now uh, privileged to have the first of the two panels on energy. Uh, this first panel is the new landscape uh, in energy and utilities, electricity, oil and gas, and water supply. And uh, I would like to welcome, uh, we have a top level uh, group of panelists, and uh, I will let uh, Pablo uh, Escondrillas, the head of uh, Power and Utilities of Investment Banking at City, to introduce them. Again, Pablo and everybody else, Thierry, Alex, Harry, Andreas and George, thank you for being with us. And uh, I promise you next year, we're going to have it in New York. Uh, <laughs> we did last year. So Pablo, the floor is yours. Well, uh, thank, thank you, Nicholas. We'll, uh, we'll keep you, you keep you to your word on, on this. Uh, thank you everyone for, um, for, for your time. And uh, I'm here with uh, this uh, distinguished uh, panel. I'll make a very quick uh, introduction of, of everyone who's uh, who's involved, uh, Mr. Harry Sahinis, he's the CEO of uh, ADAP, the Athens uh, Water Supply and Sewage uh, Company. Mr. Uh, Thierry Grawels, the CFO of DESFA, the Hellenic Trust Transmission System Operator. Mr. Andreas Siamisis, CEO of Hellenic Petroleum. Mr. Alex Botton, the head of MA EMEA Energy and Infrastructure at Amura. And finally, Mr. Georgios Stasis, uh, the chairman and CEO of PPC, the Public Power Corporation. No. So I'm going to ask uh, some uh, questions, uh, common questions to, to all of them, and I'll ask them to uh, to take uh, to, to to go through them in uh, in in turns, uh, uh, and uh, we'll given the, the, the short uh, uh, panel, we'll we'll try to keep the quest, uh, the replies uh, short. The, the, the first question is, uh, what is your company's uh, strategy to um, to adjusting or thriving in the in the current? Um, the current, by the changes brought by the uh, by the energy and environmental uh, transition, and maybe um, maybe I would like uh, I would like uh, George to uh, to start with the with the first response. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for having me here. It's a, it's a great honor to be back in this discussion. It's unfortunate we cannot meet in person, but I'm very happy to participate in this uh, discussion today. Uh, uh, Pablo, globally, the utilities landscape is at a turning point. The role of traditional utilities is changing and is under pressure by the increased momentum for decarbonization and shift to Greece energy. The need for growing digitalization across value chain and functions and new opportunities from electrification. At PPC, we have been building our business plan and our strategy in, the, in line with these global trends, with the context of uh, the EU regulatory framework and in line with the National Energy and Climate Plan for Greece, we tend to play an important role in the country's energy transition towards a greener, more socially responsible and more efficient energy model. Our contribution to this national goal over the next years is threefold, I would say. First, lead the path towards environmental sustainability by decommissioning fully our lignite units. Second, redeploy our capital towards investments in renewables where we aim to substantially increase our market share while supporting the country's energy needs. And third, to create a flexible distribution network for the new ecosystem of energy transition to flourish. Based on our view of, uh, on the energy market outlook, we have set three uh, major strategic pillars uh, for our uh, business plan in the next years. First, our, our own green deal in generation with an accelerated decommissioning plan of our legacy lignite generation fleet and mines, the fastest in Europe, and a ramp, a ramp up in parallel of renewables as the new dominant generation technology. Then we have the digitalization and operational efficiency as our second pillar of our strategy. So to capture cost and revenue efficiencies, applying new technologies across all areas, especially in grids to enhance re uh, return of investments. And third, as a third pillar, pursuing areas of additional growth through customer centricity with uh, repositioning our retail business. We are redefining our go-to-market approach, focusing on our high-value customers and further expanding our product portfolio with the introduction of new value-added uh, services and new business areas such as e-mobility. Finally, PPC will generate value to its shareholders through a sustainable uh, growth business model over the next three years. PPC will reconfigure its generation fleet as discussed and therefore reduce its CO2 emissions by more than 60% by year end, 
becoming much healthier and by far less risky company, will redeploy its capital to shift generation towards sustainable sources with material renewables capacity built up and undertake a 1.6 billion investments in grid, supporting the expanding of its activities in line with uh, our distribution network development plan, with new investments and technologies such as smart meters and SCADA systems to support renewables penetration and increase system efficiency via lower losses, and therefore drive the further electrification of the energy sector by leading the way for e-mobility in Greece with more than 1,000 electric vehicle public charges to the installed to, to be installed in, in key lo locations across the car country starting from next year. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, uh, George. Maybe I, if I can turn to, uh, to Harry, Mr. Harry Sahinis, your views on this. Sure, thank you very much. And again, uh, good uh, to be with uh, all of you, even though electronically. Um, our company being the water business is definitely very much close to whatever happens in the environment. The environment is extremely important for us. So a big part of our investments uh, is going into the circular economy. For example, we are going to be building um, a big network of uh, uh, wastewater uh, pipes uh, in Eastern Attica, and that's going to be about a 650 million euro investment serving a population of 400,000 inhabitants. But what is important there is that we're going to use the water that comes out of the waste, wastewater plants uh, for irrigation uh, in the Eastern Attica uh, region and also to supplement uh, the underground aquifer. Uh, we're making significant efforts to reduce our uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, actually, we plan uh, within the next uh, 10 years to become completely carbon neutral. Um, and uh, along those lines, we have already reduced in the past uh, five years, uh, we own the largest wastewater treatment plant in Europe, that's a treatment, wastewater treatment plant in Citalia, and we have reduced uh, the gas emissions there by 60% in the last five years, and we're planning to reduce them by an additional 50% in the next uh, 10 years. We're investing in renewable energy, we're installing solar panels in all of our facilities and uh, uh, some acreage that we have around the faci our facilities. Uh, we are moving into e-mobility and planning in the next three years to replace 25% of our car fleet uh, with electric cars, achieving a, a quite a large reduction in our CO2 emissions and um, making various interventions in our uh, water and wastewater facilities to further reduce uh, the CO2 emissions. But when we're talking about environment, it is not only um, uh, the secular economy and uh, uh, CO2, it is also the non-revenue water as it's called. Uh, we don't want to be wasting water. We're going to be investing in replacing our pipeline network so that we reduce our non-revenue water uh, significantly. But I have to say, because environment is only one part of the total our total ESG approach. There are a lot of things that we're doing on the other two letters, the social side, uh, with social tariffs for, our, for the non-privileged social groups, donating to hospitals um, uh, in the middle of the uh, COVID crisis, and especially something that's very important for our uh, customers, not raising the tariffs. And so there's a plan to make all these investments without raising the tariffs. And, and that is actually what we're trying to do by containing our costs. And of course, uh, on the G side, uh, everything that has to do with best corporate governance, that's something that we're implementing uh, so that uh, we can move forward the company to the next level. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for uh, thank you for that. Okay, very interesting. Uh, if I can turn to to Andreas, Andreas Shamishis, your your views on this topic. You're on mute. Sorry. Okay. Now. I think now you can hear me. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, always a pleasure to be amongst uh, distinguished um, co-panelists and and friends. Um, Actually, Harry is, is, uh, is uh, talking about water, but he could very easily talk about energy as well, given his background. Uh, and I think we cover all of the energy sectors um, uh, amongst us. Um, yeah. <clears throat> now, when it comes to the energy transition, I think the, the, everybody is talking about uh, uh, the future, about what we need to do. 
about uh, renewables. Um, and I think it's a common theme across the board. Um, companies in the sector are talking about uh, establishing a stronger portfolio of renewables. Uh, banks are chasing projects. Um, the government is promoting this um, uh, agenda. But I think the emphasis that we need to place is on the word transition. Um, I can assure you it's much easier to become an ESG um, uh, savvy company when you're starting from uh, a zero base. Uh, if you're carrying a few billion of invested capital, however, and I think uh, George will also uh, agree with that, that um, <laughs> if you're actually starting from a different um, uh, place in the energy grid, and whether it's uh, uh, electricity or whether it's uh, oil and gas, which is, uh, in our case, the energy component, um, things can get a bit tricky because you still need to maintain a decent return on your capital for the shareholders on the already invested capital and at the same time find the resources to divert the focus of, uh, of the company of, into the future into more green um, areas. Now, a couple of, uh, of points on this. Um, there's a panel later on on um, uh, green energy and um, a colleague of mine will be participating, but I just wanted to highlight a few things. First of all, um, if we expand the envelope of energy to include the oil and gas, because it is part of the energy supply chain, uh, about 50% of the energy needs uh, in the next 10 to 20 years will still be hydrocarbons based. Be it not gas, be it uh, oil, it will still be hydrocarbon based. And uh, until technology proves otherwise, it's very difficult to move entirely away from um, the hydrocarbons value chain. So we see as part of our challenge, the need to actually improve the footprint of our core business. And that includes a number of different um, uh, initiatives. Uh, for example, it's the biofuels initiative, which is uh, effectively adding to the greener uh, footprint. Um, I won't go into the well-to-wheel uh, discussion because it's uh, going to take forever, but still biofuels is something which is definitely better than fossil fuel. Uh, we have uh, synthetic fuels. We have uh, hydrogen technologies to be used uh, in the refineries. Uh, even as a power source, even though that is probably uh, a little further down the line. But um, we still need to maintain our focus on improving our existing energy base. Moving into the future, Hellenic Petroleum is diverting its um, bulk of investment into greener energy uh, portfolio. So I would probably say that um, more than 50% of our investments in the future uh, will be in the areas of uh, renewables and probably gas as well, given that they are greener than our existing uh, portfolio. However, it is important to approach this topic with uh, a big dose of realism and, uh, and, and consistency. It is not a sprint. This transition is something which will take um, uh, a significant time to implement we have the technology risk, which is continuously making uh, investments obsolete. Uh, so we need to be careful overall as a society. It's not just a corporate. The corporate is the last pillar, if you will. But we need to be realistic about expectations and about how we manage this transition. OK. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Andreas. And if I can turn to Thierry, Thierry Gawels, for your perspectives on this fast sure. activity. Thanks, Pablo. Uh, as you know, um, DESFA has been privatized uh, about uh, two years ago, and I think that uh, at that time, it's probably the, the right moment for investing uh, in, in Greece, um, because the, the market has uh, significantly stabilized itself, um, and uh, that uh, allows the investors to have more confidence to, to invest, uh, but also invest in, uh, in projects which are related to, to the Green Deal. So uh, DESFA has decided that uh, we would uh, invest about uh, half a billion over the next uh, five years. Um, a significant amount of these uh, investments will help 
uh, our partners uh, in uh, PPC in that case to uh, switch from coal to, to gas by investing in, uh, in pipeline in, uh, in West, uh, West Macedonia. Uh, but not only that, DESFA will also try to uh, further develop the security of supply and the, and the flexibility of, uh, of the access to, to energy. And as you know, we will also further develop the uh, position of Greece as an energy hub, and we will ex uh, internalize our external, sorry, uh, internationalize our activities towards uh, the Middle East. Um, positioning gas as a key enabler for uh, a transition. Uh, I think it has been recognized that uh, gas has a key role to play there. Um, so in, in that context, we are also looking at uh, hydrogen ready pipeline, because I think that we need to focus on the, uh, the long term, but uh, we have a very clear uh, ambition in the short term to help the, uh, the decarbonization of, uh, of the Greek market and then the call to shift. I'd like also to mention that we are talking a lot about um, uh, greenhouse gases. I think it is always important to remind everyone that uh, air quality is also an important aspect. And in that context, uh, investment in small scale LNG, especially for Greece is, uh, is very uh, uh, relevant. Um, if I have to give you my assessment of where we are, I think that the the stability is there, the cooperation and the coordination of activities uh, is there and is improving significantly in, in Greece. I think the uh, regulatory framework uh, can increase a little bit, uh, stability can, can increase, but we are working uh, very closely with the regulator to make sure that these investments can indeed uh, happen. And I think that's from a, a financing perspective, uh, there is some, some interest there as well. Um, but I need to make sure that it's well understood that the Green Deal is, is much, it's much more than uh, uh, windmills and, and solar panel. I think we are talking about an uh, end-to-end uh, environment where a lot of technologies will need to uh, work together. And in that context, I think that uh, the gas infrastructure is, uh, is an important aspect for that transition. Thank you. Uh... Thank you very much. And, and finally, for this first section, uh, last but not least, uh, Alex, no, your, your perspective as, as advisor and uh, how you see the, the companies and, and your own efforts to, uh, to, uh, to, to manage this uh, complicated transition. Yeah, look, I mean, from, um, I guess, from an investment banking point of view, um, the energy transition creates a lot of change uh, for everybody. Um, and I think transition is an important word. Um, Maybe just in terms of our own sort of reflections, we obviously are now um, making sure that um, you know, ESG is part of our uh, business across the bank. And we have a wholesale executive committee focused on uh, ESG, which I'm a participant of, um, and that's, that's important. And then in terms of us uh, externally, it's all about supporting our clients, obviously. Uh, and um, you know, we've done a lot of work on the green bond side of things transition bonds being helpful to assist companies who maybe have a, a incumbent legacy position around traditional energy transitioning and helping them access capital markets to, to sort of newer uh, pools of liquidity. And then on the advisory side, believe it or not, we did our own M&A uh, transaction where we bought a, a renewable and low carbon um, energy transition specialist group called GreenTech that we uh, have bolted on to add to our group. So, so we're here, I guess, ultimately to support our clients and, and all those comments that have been made by the, the um, distinguished panelists, I think we very much agree with. And there's gonna be a lot of change and capital required to assist that transition. And uh, hopefully we can support, you know, the likes of these uh, esteemed clients uh, in, in their transition. Very good. Thank you for that. Um, so uh, from there, if we could, uh, if we could turn to uh, to, to obviously the, this year has been very special. Now the beyond doing this conference on over video call, the the, the pandemic has clearly changed uh, people's lives and uh, livelihoods. No, so I would like to ask how the pandemic has changed your your own organization's uh, approach to uh, to this transition and maybe the speed or or the specifics of it. No, and uh, and if for that maybe now if we could start with uh, with Andrea. Shamish is to, to give his perspectives. 
Yeah, uh, I think 2020 has been um, um, a very odd year, to say the least. Um, it, um, it, uh, it caused everybody to reassess our priorities um, and um, to, to try and refocus on what uh, really matters. Uh, in our case, we had um, a, a multiple one, I mean, not, not even a double or a triple, because uh, not only we had the pandemic, the health crisis, which was very important for us to maintain uh, an ecosystem of roughly 10,000 people in, involved in the supply chain um, in good health and making sure that uh, um, uh, we're all together come a few months from now when the vaccine and everything will be uh, completed. Uh, we also had to manage a 24 by 7 uninterrupted operation and uh, the key challenge for us was to maintain our operations in every single petrol station, in every single airport terminal, in every single port, uh, and an interrupted uh, delivery of our products and services. Not an easy task, I can assure you. Um, and uh, it has been uh, paramount uh, alongside all of the other uh, energy and utility companies to maintain that uh, operation because you don't want a, a health crisis to be translated into an energy crisis. So that was very critical. And of course, last but not least, it was the challenge of having to manage a balance sheet which was going down the tube without touching the sides. Uh, we, we saw the crude oil prices dropping uh, like never before. Uh, we had to write off more than half a billion euro from our inventory alone uh, in the space of weeks. So uh, that was uh, quite um, uh, a big issue for us, to be honest. Uh, but we managed to, um, to take that uh, on the chin and, and move forward, managing our um, asset base, managing our funding lines, managing our uh, ability to trade with Condango trades. We, we made more than 60 million alone on Condango trades. So that was very important. Last but not least, in terms of the approach, I think it gave us an opportunity to reassess the role of uh, big corporates like ourselves uh, in terms of the community. And in that respect, we have um, spent a lot of um, resources and I'm not referring just to money and, and donations and things like that. That is something which is fairly easy to do if your numbers can support that, you just give money. But we did spend a lot of um, time as, as a company with a lot of uh, senior management staff uh, engaged, especially in the first wave, to try and help uh, primarily the Greek government and the, and the health system, but also uh, in other six countries where we have operations to make sure that we can um, uh, be of uh, more use to the societies that we are part. Now, as we exit the crisis, I think we have learned a lot of things. I won't go into the details, but uh, clearly having a very, a very um, targeted approach to the problems that you're facing at the time is, uh, is very important. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you very much. So if I can turn to Thierry. Uh, Gawels, for your perspectives on how the pandemic has changed your priorities or approach? Sure. Um, well, let me first uh, express uh, my, my gratitude to uh, all the, uh, the colleagues in, in DESFA, but uh, uh, outside DESFA as well, because um, they, have made, they have been able to maintain uh, critical infrastructure in a very difficult environment. And I think that uh, this is something that needs to be uh, uh, said again and again, it was it was an amazing uh, uh, effort and uh, achievement. Um, I would like to uh, indeed uh, continue on the on, on what uh, Andrea was saying. Is that um, I have been amazed by the creativity that uh, people have uh, demonstrated to solve the uh, the problem that uh, we were facing. Um, from from a Desfa perspective, in particular. Um, COVID has been a, a significant accelerator. Uh, we are in the middle of the transformation of the company. Uh, in, in one and a half week, we have uh, completely transformed the finance department in a paperless de department. I can assure you that it would not have been uh, possible in a different uh, situation. 
Um, but other than that, other than the, uh, let's say, operational aspect that we had to put in place to make sure that our staff can operate the company uh, and uh, in, a, in a safe way and basically guaranteeing the, the supply of energy to, uh, to the market, I have to say that um, COVID had, didn't have much impact on the, uh, the, the, the company's uh, uh, performance. Just to give a, a few numbers, we have still managed to uh, transport uh, an additional 7% of gas uh, over the year. So it's a pretty good uh, uh, increase. The industry from, uh, from our perspective is still uh, uh, consuming uh, about 17% uh, above last year. Um, so power sector is also increasing and that's represents uh, two thirds of our gas transported. So from a, from a company perspective, if there has been an impact, it was mainly on the um, operation, but I think that uh, it has been handled pretty well. Projects are going smoothly and on schedule. So from, um, yeah, COVID has been an accelerator of something that had to change uh, in any case. Thank you. Thank you for that. Good to see some, some, some positives on the net from, from COVID. I can turn to, to Georgios Stasis for your perspectives on the pandemic effects on your plans. Yes, um, thank you. Um, with respect to the pandemic, what uh, may seem initially as a threat, I agree with the colleagues, actually turned out to be an accelerator for change for us uh, in various fields of our uh, business activity, including the, the two of the three strategic pillars of our plan, uh, which are related to digitalization and customer centricity. Uh, the extraordinary conditions that have been facing due to the COVID-19 pushed us to change our business operation in order to adapt to a new, to new environment and ensure business continuity. We had to uh, quickly shift to remote work, uh, endorse new ways of communication, redesign the customer service channels, uh, enhance uh, e-bill, which we had a, a very big increase, more than 80%, electronic payments, provide new toll-free number for customer support, safeguard the energy security, change long-lasting procedures with a very short period of time. Uh, with this new framework, everyone's response in the group was immediate and effective with the company being now in a better position, having additional tools in place in order to address the challenges of the new pandemic wave, undoubtedly. In addition to the extent possible from the beginning of the pandemic, we developed actions for corporate social responsibility and we proceeded to, to measures towards supporting the society, our customers, apart from our personnel as well. To this end, taking into account the ability of the company and the positive impact on, of COVID on our commodity related costs, which is a reality, we proceeded to measures for the financial relief of our customers, focusing especially to the vulnerable ones, while at the same time we proceeded with the donation of 5 million for, uh, euros for masks and protective equipment in order to support the national health system. Definitely this was a very, very peculiar period for us, but I would say it was a push in our back uh, to move faster into digitalization and all in all uh, it helped us uh, mature as an organization and become much more ready for the future. Thank you. Thank you, George. And if I can turn to Harry uh, Sahinis for his views on this. Yes, thank, thank you, Pablo. Um, obviously, it's a common theme here, and uh, the key word in all of this is resilience. And I think all the companies here represent uh, critical infrastructures, and uh, they all showed significant resilience. And uh, so did we, and uh, we actually have a very valuable commodity, probably the most valuable commodity of all, even though it is the cheapest one, that is the most valuable, and, that, and that's water. And uh, when, when you talk about uninterrupted operations, uh, without water, you cannot live for long. Um, uh, and uh, then when you think about water also, together with soap as uh, probably the safest, easiest disinfectant that you just open your tap and then you wash your hands and you're disinfected, it just shows you how, how important uh, uh, water is in our lives and in the middle of this pandemic. Um, our six axes are safety, productivity, and development. And so safety and health and safety are really, really important uh, for us. And obviously, we had to keep our people safe uh, so that we could keep the city safe, uh, the city of Athens. And uh, that, that's what we did. 
Um, now, the pandemic indeed acted for us as well as a catalyst for digital transformation, uh, both for our customers and we provided extra services uh, to them so that they didn't have to come to our um, offices or buildings. Um, and also, it helped us uh, figure out uh, new ways of uh, connecting within the company uh, through remote working, uh, even though we're more apart, at the same time, we're closer together uh, and easier to meet uh, in two dimensions, not three dimensions, but e easier to meet <laughs> with uh, people. Um, because water is so valuable, um, uh, at the same time, we didn't see any significant impact in, revenue, in our revenues because people will use the water that they need to use. And again, the price is quite cheap. Actually, uh, our prices are uh, the second cheapest prices in Europe if you even include GDP uh, of different countries uh, in, in, into the calculation. Uh, and uh, we didn't have any other significant problems. We had initially through the lockdown uh, delays in our receivables collection, uh, but then we, we caught up with them and uh, we are back to the same uh, receivable collection uh, rates that we were uh, last year. So uh, all in all, I think we, we learned a lot of things. We became more resilient and uh, uh, so that we can continue to provide uh, uninterrupted uh, water and wastewater services to our customers here in Athens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. And I think uh, as I was uh, thinking, listening to, to all of you, and I was thinking that was, you're fortunate to, to, to lead organizations you know, whose, whose workers you know, at, at every level you know, have realized over this year you know, that you're not in the health sector, but you have also been key workers in their own way to keep the, the society going when, when things were, uh, were in, in lockdown mode. You know? so, um, so well done. And, uh, and finally, on, on this, uh, Alex, no, obviously the, I'm sure it's been a, a big personal change for you and, your, and, and Nomura, but uh, how do you see this pandemic as accelerating things for, uh, for, your, own, uh, for your own work and, and, your, and how you approach clients? Yeah, look, I think it's been a, an amazingly volatile year. Uh, obviously, it's been a very challenging year for many people on a personal level as well as a professional level. Um, and, uh, you know, I think one of the things that gives me a lot of confidence about the future is the, you know, when we talk about the broader utility and energy space is the, is the speed and collective sort of decision making that's occurred around things like the European Green Deal. Frankly, I was surprised actually at the speed of the uh, movement there and, and the, the, the pace of change. Uh, I think that's going to be fascinating. And I think that's going to, you know, one of the sort of silver linings to the cloud of, of COVID um, during the course of this year. I think it's also given people a little bit of time to reflect on, on sort of things that, that matter. And I think, you know, the perception of um, environment is, is just now, you know, pretty much one of the first topics, if not top three, almost always for, for the investors we deal with on a global basis. And it's great to see that Greece as well um, has embraced that. And uh, whether it's through the sort of political sphere that are, are highly supportive of that energy transition, recognizing where Greece has come from as well in terms of the history of the, of the market in Greece. Um, and, and so I think that that's gonna be fascinating to see what the next sort of five and 10 years holds. I, the question is for me is will the change be as fast i mean this year has just been so surprising in so many ways you know what what's next in this fast moving environment and uh, you know how will companies react uh, and continue to evolve to meet those challenges because i don't think it's going to be a linear path uh, would be my view thank you and finally, for our last uh, 15 minutes uh, or so, if, uh, if I, we could turn to something, uh, something a bit different now and, and think about, uh, again, focusing on, on Greece, now, what, are the, uh, what are the hurdles that your, your business face or, or, well, is it five minutes or 15 minutes? I, think, I thought we had 15. Uh, do we, we had, uh, anyway, let's uh, move forward. But uh, what are the hurdles that your business uh, Faces, no. Uh, I guess we have five. Yeah, sorry. So I think I guess we'll need to be much uh, much briefer. Uh, uh, so maybe if we can start with Harry, uh, some uh, some comments on uh, maybe a minute or so on your 
you're on mute, Harry. Uh, I, I wouldn't call them really barriers, I would call them challenges. And uh, these are challenges that we should overcome and plan ahead so that we can overcome, uh, overcome them. There are some short term ones and some longer term ones. On, on the shorter term, um, we are moving to a new regulatory framework for water. So we're, we're making that transition, and that's going to be interesting. And our regulatory framework is going to be exactly the same one as the one that exists for energy. So uh, there are a lot of people with experience on that, so uh, it's going to be interesting. We're facing, because 61% of our shares are owned by the state, uh, we have some uh, restrictions on certain things and through certain laws like a procurement law and labor laws that apply to uh, companies that are partially uh, owned by the state, but we have seen the government uh, starting to relax some of these constraints in companies like PPC, and we hope that we can get similar treatment since uh, we're also listed in the stock exchange. So that's something that we're lobbying for. Um, and uh, then, uh, obviously, the economic environment, uh, it's still unstable, and it will probably be unstable for a few more years. Uh, but uh, we have been resilient so far, and uh, we believe that that will continue. The health environment, again, uh, what happens with pandemics and uh, what may happen in the future. But again, there we have proven uh, that resilience. And finally, for us, especially climate change, uh, because we want to make sure that there's enough water for the 5 million people who live in the Athens area. Um, but uh, I, I think there is plenty for the next many years, uh, but we really have to plan ahead for the future for like 30 years and beyond. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Thierry, Raoul, if I can ask you for your thoughts on this, in, ideally in, under, in one minute or less. Sure, sure. I will, I will make uh, it short. Uh, well, uh, completely agree with the, the regulatory framework uh, transition. Uh, also for the uh, energy sector, this is something that uh, continuously needs to uh, uh, be looked at. I think it would be nice if the uh, regulatory framework could be uh, incentive-based and uh, uh, capture the, the best practice uh, from, from Europe. But if I had to, to conclude, I think that uh, uh, Greece, the timing is right for doing the investment that uh, we have in, in, in place. Uh, we have plenty of projects and uh, projects which are supporting the energy transition. Uh, the location of Greece is right as well in the sense that um, Greece is becoming the, the hub, uh, the energy hub that uh, uh, was uh, talked about for, for quite some time. So from, from an investment perspective, because this is the, the theme of, the, uh, uh, of this uh, panel, I think it is the right time to invest in the country because uh, the, the future is, uh, is looking pretty good uh, uh, moving ahead. Thank you. And Andreas, some final considerations from you? Uh, well, first of all, I'm very optimistic about the, uh, the outlook. Um, we clearly have to across the next uh, few months. So maintaining focus on uh, keeping everybody healthy needs to be a top of the agenda item. So we should not be carried away with a lot of things. I need to mention the fact that Greece has a couple of non-conventional risks and challenges ahead of it. The geopolitical issue is something which defocuses everybody uh, in, in the country. Uh, so it is important to keep it at the back of our minds. And also, we need to bear in mind that Greece is coming out of a 10-year crisis. So it was coming out, which is a positive thing because we are well-trained. We do our drills every day. But on the other hand, we don't have that much reserve. Um, now, moving forward, I think that um, what we need is probably um, the maturity to manage the transition to a new um, uh, market model on the energy side. We need to have the political, social, and economic maturity to understand that if we're going to change, then we need to accept changes as well. You cannot change the world without accepting any change in your backyard, be it uh, employment, uh, environment, um, regional um, changes. So we need to accept that. And it's a question of maturity. Yeah. We don't score very high there. And reskilling people. I think those are the three key challenges that we need to take into account. Yeah, and maybe if, if with Ms. Mr. Pnosic's uh, uh, permission, if we could have a final minute for, for Mr. Stasis also for his uh, considerations on. 
and the hurdles to overcome for the future. Yeah, okay, thank you. Just just uh, less than a minute. I think I'm optimistic as well. Uh, definitely, we are moving to a more uh, to to this energy transition. This means more renewables in the country and more intermediacy as well. Uh, this comes along with a new market, a new power market, the famous target model. This is a new reality we need to handle and we are handling bilateral PPAs between generators, aggregators, corporates will be coming and PPC will be the first to launch such type of contracts. Overall, this has a huge potential for more than 11 gigawatt as per the energy and climate plan. And PPC, due to its vertical integrated position, is today uniquely placed, I would say, to drive the energy transition and capture the sector's growth potential. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for your uh, for your thoughts and, and your time. And I'm glad that the technology worked well. And hopefully next time we can do it in person. I'll hand it over to, to Nicolas again. All I want to say is thank you. Great panel uh, indeed. And uh, thank you very much for being with us and for a terrific discussion. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.